Hello, it is Tuesday, September 6th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Tuesday puzzle today, so it shouldn't be too tricky. It should be another relatively accessible themed puzzle after yesterday's um, Monday puzzle. And this hopefully accessible and themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by David Innes, Josh Lucas, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shulmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel and uh, helping to make this series a sustainable part of my daily work. I do very much appreciate that, as I appreciate the efforts and contributions of all of the Patreon contributors. So thank you to all of you, regardless of level. You can join their ranks and get all of the uh, bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week by going to patreon.com slash daily solve. Of course, if you do become a benefactor like those first five, you can get the daily solve. Let's check the crosses mug. And that can be found in the link in the description field underneath the video, where you can also find a link to the Daily Solve Discord chat server. Feel free to go head over there and check out the Constructor's Corner, the discussion of the Daily New York Times puzzle, Wordle, and so on. And do subscribe to the channel. We are closing in on 10,000 subscribers. Hopefully this month we'll reach that. And thank you to everybody who has pushed us towards that goal. All right, let's get on to the puzzle. This was constructed by... Trenton Charlson, this Tuesday puzzle, um, a familiar name to New York Times crossword solvers. He's constructed a few dozen crosswords for the Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Okay, part of a fast food combo. Coke, maybe? I wonder if it's referring to getting a drink with a meal. Uh, religion founded in Punjab. Um, I'm not sure. That'll be interesting to see. Impudent sort. Um, a snot or something like that. I don't know. Uh, soaks up the sun. Basks, maybe? NFL player turned broadcaster Blank Rashad. Unsurprisingly, I'm not sure. Longtime conductor of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Oh, interesting. I don't know. I wonder if I'll recognize the name when it, when I get more crosses, kind of monkey used in medical research. I don't know. Bonobo. Uh, let's see. Soaks up the sun. A rhesus, maybe. Rhesus, you always hear about rhesus monkeys in that context. Maybe that's it. So an impudent sort is a, a brat. There we go. That's it. Is that true about me? Am I? You might ask. Blank Mahal, the Taj Mahal, of course, the famous landmark. And oh, this looks like Ahmad. Ahmad. Okay. Performed. Did. You did something. You performed it. Oh, okay. I do sort of recognize this name. Seiji, is it Ozawa? Longtime conductor of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Yeah, I, I, I recognize this as a, as a conductor's name, but I can't. I'm not 100% certain. Rest on ones. So it's probably, I'm probably wrong. Rest on one's blank. Take it easy. Rest on one's... Not laurels, which is what comes to mind. Um, I don't know. Accursed? Damned? There we go. That, that would be literally... That would literally make sense. If you've been accursed, you've been damned. Thingamajig could be a gizmo. And Jeepers could be something. A brand whose logo's letters are covered in snow. Brand whose logo's letters are covered in snow. Um, I'm not sure about that. Anthem with both French, with both English and French lyrics. Oh, it must be O Canada, given the um, two official languages of Canada being English and French. Attached as a patch, sewed on, and an accessory for a pilot or a telemarketer, a headset, I suppose, um, one of those mic microphone headsets. Oh, this was Seiji Ozawa. Look at that. Is it a U or an O? I guess it would have been an O, but I'm not sure. Rest on ones. Is it oats? What about this? They all lead to no. 
Rest in one's oars. That makes much more sense. <laughs> I, don't know why, I don't know why oats came to mind. Uh, they all lead to Rome, it's say. All roads lead to Rome, goes the, goes the classic saying. Okay, Yokohama-based automaker, Isuzu. And is that, is that the car maker's name, Isuzu? I think so. I think that's right. Like a balanced game in economics, a zero-sum game. So all of the gains are are balanced out by by losses uh, on the part of another party in the economic transaction or system. Fathom or furlong is a unit, unit of length. And if you, uh, let's see, if she ships something out, she sends it. Pop to a tot. So could be just a child's name for a father, dada, maybe. And a narrow waterway is a rhea. That feels like, this feels like a bit of crossword ease, but, but I don't actually remember seeing it very often in crosswords. It seems like it would be because of the commonness of the letters and it's only three letters in length, but I actually don't recall seeing it very often in the crossword. Anyway, probably still one to keep in mind for crossword purposes, at least. What dogs often do after a few rounds of go fetch? They pant, I suppose. There's... Um, Sort of a necessary function for them. Groups that often sponsor book fairs. Uh, PTAs, parent-teacher associations. Ah, oh, interesting. Seiji Ozawa was, was part of our theme. I guess that makes sense given the position of that answer. So indication of more to come or a hint to a feature of three consecutive letters in 18, 20, 59, and 61 across. Well, this IGI looks like is sort of conspicuous collection of letters. What does that, what would that mean? Indication of, I don't know, maybe it's, could be something else. It's just, oh yeah, it is, the, it is that. Because shenanigans are hijinks. Which also has this IJI uh, little triplet there. Oh, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> because um, in their lowercase form, I, J, and I are all dotted letters. So indication of more to come, you say dot, dot, dot to verbally represent an ellipsis character. And uh, of course, also the three dots of these characters, I, J, I. So there we go. There's our theme, just a fun little, another little theme observing a little linguistic pattern. And uh, so we're going to have more of those. Anyway. Okay. Prefix with matter or gravity. Antimatter or anti-gravity. Casanova. Um, Don Juan, in the sense that those names are both used to refer to great legendary lovers. You could you, you, People use them sort of colloquially for that, for that purpose. Part of a fast food combo. Oh, right. Soda. So I was on the right track, but I should have been more general than Coke. I don't know why I didn't start with something more general first, but that's fine. Privy to, if you're privy to some information, you're in on it. Clark of the Daily Planet. This is um, Clark Kent, Superman's alias, alter ego. Ah, religion founded in Punjab, Sikhism. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Promise of payment would be an IOU. Uh, literally a promise of payment. The tiniest amount, one iota. We've seen quite a few iotas in the puzzle recently, but usually as an individual word, not with the one. I wonder how often this f phrase, one iota, has appeared in the crossword. Don't blank with me. Don't start with me, you might say. Feudal residences could be manors. You could have a feudal lord who lives in a manor, a stately home. Explosive component informally, nitro, nitroglycerin. And teased relentlessly. If you teased someone relentlessly, you rode them. You're just really nagging them. Lee, who created the X-Men, the famous uh, comic book creator Stan Lee. And actress Delaney, who is that? Some small batteries could be AA batteries, AAs. And world weariness, ennui. Um, from the French. So what is that? Dana, maybe? Or Danny? Those are the two names I can think of that would fit there. 
capital of Jordan, Amman. So Dana, Dana Delaney. All right. It's me again. I'm back. <laughs> there we go. And a high home for a hawk. Nice alliteration there. High home for a hawk. Uh, it could be an airy, so a high up nest on a cliff face, for instance, or a cliff ed uh, edge, I suppose. Okay, neighbor of a Saudi could be an Omani, so um, Oman, a neighbor of Saudi Arabia. And an Italian tourist town near Naples. Is it Amalfi? Actually, not sure. Like some additions and partnerships, well, you could have a limited edition run of some manufactured good or a limited partnership, a company. So, yeah, this looks like this probably is. Lost consciousness in a way. Faded? What about this? Like some elephants and all tigers. Asian, the Asian elephant. And then I guess all tigers are Asian, which makes sense, I suppose. Is that true? I guess so. And Emma Stone's role in La La Land. Oh, uh, I did see this. I don't remember her character's name. Yeah, don't remember. Okay, hurting badly. In agony, maybe? There we go. This looks like a Malfi after all. Um, Mia? Was her name Mia, maybe? Lost consciousness in a way. Fainted, right. Sorry. Okay. There we go. Just needed to write in that I. Host city of the 20, uh, sorry, 2008 Olympics, Beijing. And there's another IJI. That's not a not an easy, not an easy pattern to find, really, in English anyway. Is this some, and I guess notably, at least two of these so far have not been English language words. Uh, is this some kind, or natively anyway, is this some kind of twisted joke? Just some kind of twisted joke to you. Eight in Italian, auto, and then astute is keen. You could be a keen observer, an astute observer of something. And a small vortex is an eddy, a little whirlpool. So there we go. All right. What about this South Pacific currency? Uh, Fiji something, probably, because of the IJI. What's the currency of Fiji? Is there any way it's dollar? I mean, that would sort of fit here. Crossed out, X'd, literally crossed something out on a sheet of paper. Turf could be sod, soil, um, you lay sod. Some Olympic projectiles, disky, discs, for the disc throw. Is that how that's properly pluralized? Tupperware topper, or maybe not properly, but originally. Tupperware topper, you could have a lid. Yeah, this is dollar. Okay. So royal, f no, sorry. What is, oh, I didn't even look at that. Royal family title, Duke. I was thinking, why was I, why was Dake? Um, yes, ro royal family title, uh, a Duke, a royal title. And then school whose mascot is Mike the Tiger, LSU. We learned about Mike the Tiger recently, kept in an extremely... I guess, high-tech tiger enclosure next to the stadium and no longer trotted out into, onto the field before games. Okay, Alan Blank, folklorist who discovered legends like Woody Guthrie and Pete Seeger. Oh, interesting. Alan Lomax, I know that I know this person, yeah. I, I mean, I know of this person, I should say. Uh, yes, a famous um, chronicler of American music. A star-studded group could be the A-list celebrities and galas, e.g. are fets or soirees, or I don't know, I'm not saying it. It may lead to a full-time position, a temp job maybe, temporary job. Um, big gala, oh, a fet, that's funny, that was, <laughs> so we had galas here, and then a big gala is a fete. Okay, a uh, party. Fried Mideast Fair, falafels, or falafel, just falafel. 
miscounted the number of cells and thought it was going to be plural, but it wasn't. American blank, beverage. American ale, I've seen that before, kind of beer. Not doing things the right way. So here we have two clues that something funny is up. We have the seeming misspelling of right, R-A-G-H-T, to be right, a ceremony or, or something like that. And then we have, excuse me, then we have a um, question mark indicating punnery or wordplay. So if you're not doing things the right way, perhaps you're eloping rather than having a formal wedding ceremony. So what was this? Oh, gala, gala apples. Okay. Gala is a variety of apple, I suppose it is. I do. I, I have heard, I've eaten those and seen them. Okay. And then grandson of Adam and Eve is Enos. And then, I uh, haven't seen this clue yet. Letters associated with the rainbow flag, LGBT. So there we go. And did I miss anything? I think that's everything. There we go. All right. Look at that. I would say this was similar. This reminded me of yesterday's puzzle in that it was an approachable early week puzzle, but maybe just a tad tougher than a typical Tuesday, I would say, maybe. I don't know. Let me know if you agreed with that. Uh, certainly the theme clues, I think, were fairly, or at least, well, Maybe hijinks was not so tricky in Beijing, not not so tricky, but Seiji Ozawa and Fiji Dollar, those are, I mean, those aren't obvious polls for a Tuesday puzzle, I wouldn't say. Uh, quite a few bits of uh, geographically related knowledge in the sense that, you know, the religion f founded in, in Punjab was uh, clued based on its geographical location. And then there were several of those as well. The Fiji dollar, South Pacific currency, uh, host city of the 2008 Olympics, uh, these Italian tourist town near Naples. Yeah, quite quite a few um, either bits of geography or geography used to clue answers. That's funny. I wonder if that was in any way knowing or intentional, but it was, it was noticeable while solving the puzzle, I would say. Oh, and then Amman, capital of Jordan. Um, so yeah, a bit of, bit of a bit of a sort of sub theme today, perhaps. Uh, but there we go. A nice uh, a nice fun puzzle. I guess we should recap these. So we had Seiji Ozawa, High Jinx, oops, uh, Beijing, and the Fiji dollar. Examples of our dot, 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 IJI pattern. Just one of those funny little observations. I guess the constructor must have just noticed this maybe in one or two words and thought, oh, look at that. That's sort of an interesting s sequence of letters. And they're all dotted wonder how that sort of thing comes about. Anyway, there we go. That was the Tuesday puzzle by Trenton Charlson. Enjoyed that. And I think I have only a single clue to read from yesterday's puzzle. So a big change from the Monday puzzle, which follows the huge Sunday grid, which always has plenty, plenty to correct. In this case, it's a comment by Cooper Gamble, who says, a bit of minutia that may help you avoid errors in the future. An ion is not always positively charged. The term ion simply implies that an atom as a non an atom has a non-zero net charge. So it could describe a positively or negatively charged particle. Thus we have the terms cation, positive ion, and anion, negative ion. For instance, in the iconic compound NaCl, sodium is a cation because it loses an electron, whereas chloride, yes, ide because it is an ion, gains an electron. So thank you for that, uh, Cooper Gamble. I've actually been um We've had comments to this effect before, and I, I do remember that. Uh, I, I, rem I especially remember the <laughs> the pronunciation cation and anion because they're so incredibly unintuitive relative to standard English pr pronunciation. You'd think those would be pronounced cation and anion or something like that, um, uh, which is one of the ways that <laughs> this bit of information sticks to my memory. But I, but I think yesterday I was distracted by sort of putting the cart before the horse, seeing the two crosses in the grid and thinking, oh, well, that, that's po those are positive signs, ions, ions are positively charged. So I think I was just letting the association of the theme uh, run away from me. But I think that does illustrate this isn't deeply, deeply seated knowledge for me, even though I may have learned it before. It uh, was able to be overwritten by <laughs> a minor flight of fancy in a crossword grid. So thank you for that correction. And that's that. So I'll be back tomorrow for the Wednesday puzzle. Perhaps just a bit of a step up in difficulty from these arguably, maybe just slightly 
slightly uh, increased difficulty early week puzzles. We'll have to see. Hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your uh, Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.